Good morning. I'm trying the Madonna mic a little bit later, only during the preaching. We'll just use this guy first. I just guess Madonna was like the first person to use like a headset and like, I not, no, no, no similarities. Uh, good morning. My name is uh, Pastor Dwayne. Uh, for those online, this is uh, First Presbyterian Church of Castlewood. If you're uh, looking for a different uh, church, stay. We'll uh, enjoy your presence and, and we'll just worship together. Amen? All right. So some announcements that are uh, in the bulletins. Uh, in more ways than one. Uh, school board meeting tomorrow evening, that's here. Uh, what room do they do that in? Is it just straight downstairs? All right, downstairs, school board meeting at uh, 7 p.m. tomorrow, and then the community closet is listed there. It says uh, July 20th, the Hamlin Reformed Church Ice Cream Social. Somebody will have to tell me, what is that about? Okay, great. I'm going to need directions eventually. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the new guy. Uh, and then Vacation Bible School is coming up uh, July 25th through the 29th. Uh, that is at, a, at an interesting time in the middle of the day, 11.30 to 2.45. And that, there were things going on that had to uh, swedge that in between other things that, that were going on in the community. So that is going on there. Another uh, announcement that's in the bulletin. Uh, you'll notice the second hymn has a, a minor correction to it. Uh, it, it's, the first listing is for the Bemis Church at page 298 is accurate for Spirit of God descend upon my heart. Uh, for us here, it's going to be number 132. And uh, the computer and printer at random got together, conspired against us, and changed the numbers on us. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Uh, Laura and I came to that conclusion after much research, uh, and we have set the computer straight. So, uh, are there any other announcements for the good of the body? All right, seeing none, let us rise and uh, sing our doxology. Remain standing if you are able. Anywhere that it says stand, if you find that uh, your body has said not this morning, it's okay. Sit, but be present. Rise in heart in the spirit of God. And I'm going to ask one uh, interesting thing. I've grown up, it's been like 50 years whenever I do the Gloria Patri to stand and, and face the cross. So somebody asked me, he's like, are you looking at, this? You looking at the, the flag? No, no, I'm facing the cross because I'm trying to get out of the way so you all can say glory to God and not say, you know, yeah, glory. No, not me. It's not me. I've got three kids and maybe a father, but no, the glory of Patria is for God alone. Amen? Amen. So uh, if we might, if you're able, if you're willing, if you're, you did it all your life until you got here, we'll just stand for that. And if you want to remain seated, that's up to you, between you and God. So let us move to our call to worship. Gather us in, Lord, and hear our prayers. Gather us in, Lord, and heal our spirits. We come here seeking guidance and strength. Gather us in, Lord, and open our hearts to receive your word. Open our hearts, our spirits, our souls to comprehend your word and follow you faithfully. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, we have made space in our day, in our lives, to put to a small amount of time this morning toward loving you. God, would you be in our, our prayers and our praise, meet us where we are able to meet you, and draw us closer to your spirit, to your son, and to your way, in whose name we pray, amen. Our opening hymn is number 486, that's Have Thine O Way, Lord.
wish you all could be up here and hear you singing. We really sound good. Our first reading is Psalms 82, 1 through 8, on page 921. I will read the odd, and you read the even. God presides in the great assembly. He gives judgment among the gods. How long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the cause of the weak and fatherless. Maintain the rights of the poor and oppressed. Rescue the weak and needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They know nothing. They understand nothing. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. But you will die like mere men. You will fall like every other ruler. Rise up, O God. Judge the earth. For all the nations are your inheritance. Our next reading is from Amos 7, 7 through 17, on page 1428, if you care to follow along. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing by a wall that had been built true to plumb with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord asked me, what do you see, Amos? A plumb line, I replied. Then the Lord said, look, I am setting a plumb line among my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. The high places of Isaac will be destroyed and the sanctuaries of Israel will be ruined. With my sword, I will rise against the house of Jeroboam. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent a message to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos is raising a conspiracy against you in the very heart of Israel. The land cannot bear all his words, for this is what Amos is saying. Jeroboam will die by the sword, and Israel will surely go into exile away from their native land. Then Amaziah said to Amos, Get out, you seer. Go back to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and do your prophesying there. Don't prophesy anymore at Bethel, because this is the king's sanctuary and the temple of the kingdom. Amos answered Amaziah, I was neither a prophet nor a prophet's son, but I was a shepherd, and I also took care of sycamore fig trees. But the Lord took me from tending the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Now then, hear the word of the Lord. You say, Do not prophesy against Israel and stop preaching against the house of Isaac. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. Your wife will become a prostitute in the city and your sons and daughters will fall by the sword. Your land will be measured and divided up and you yourself will die in a pagan country, and Israel will certainly go into exile away from their native land. Our next reading is Colossians 1, 1 through 14, on 1831. Paul, an apostle of Christ, Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossa, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all the saints, the faith and love that spring from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven and that you have already heard about in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. 
All over the world, this gospel is bearing fruit and growing, just as it is, has been doing among you since the day you heard it, and understand God's grace in all its truth. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we may pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Is this working? We're good? Excellent. Thank you all for humoring me on the, uh, the Gloria Patri. My five-year-old kept wanting to stand. So, you've all helped out. A little one. Amen. Would you pray with me this prayer of confession? Lord, sometimes we are confused. We hear the bad news continually shouted. The whole world seems to be in pain. Innocent people are being destroyed by wicked. We turn an indifferent ear to the cries of others, often because we are so overwhelmed by the needs and feel helpless in the face of the chaos. We walk away, often crossing over to the side of indifference because we are afraid to become involved. Our society is quick to sue and slow to heal. We succumb to those pressures in our fear. Help us, O oh Lord. Help our spirits as our bodies. Open our hearts and our eyes to see you, that we may be empowered to service. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us. Make us ready to truly become your disciples. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please take a moment for personal reflection. What can we say about what we have just said? We have a God that's bigger than all our sins, than all our shortcomings, than all the ways in which we fail to see God, to engage God, to know God, and to rise above our fallen humanity. That's a good thing, amen? In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. At this time, we do move to a time where we can each pray for our joys and our concerns, 
for our uh, world, for our neighbors, for ourselves. What are your prayers this morning? We're all in one place. Thank you for that. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they have stayed the most perfect, blessed amount of time. Okay. All right. Toby, you're getting used to coming up here, but uh, what's going on, buddy? Mommy just had her birthday. She did. And was it good? Is there anything else you need to say? You're on the mic. I can hear you. All right, it was good. Go back and keep her company. Oh, one last thing? I'm sorry. Go ahead. We watched Thor, Love, and Thunder. Oh, we went to see Thor, Love, and Thunder. <laughs> Out of love and a little bit of thunder, yes. Uh, that is not an endorsement of the film by any way, any means. Uh, so, yeah, if you choose to see that, that's your own doing. But <laughs> we went and saw it. And for a five-year-old, it was a little bit scary, but they're, you know, all in all, uh, Chris Hemsworth said that it was... It was made for the mind of a, of a seven-year-old, and he's saying that the, the director, uh, Taika Waititi, uh, like channeled his inner seven-year-old to write it. So it's a bit of a kid's thing. There's a, a kid's element to it. Still not an endorsement. You decide. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Are there any other prayer requests? All right. Let's go to God in prayer, and then we'll finish with the Lord's Prayer together. Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus Christ, how is it that we can even come to you and come to the, the feet of your cross, to the sight of your tomb? How is it that we can face heaven and lift our, our faces to see you and to know that you are there, that you are petitioning the Father on our behalf? God, we are, are glad to be all in one place, my family and I. Uh, we are thankful for so many that have worked so hard to get us to this point. God, we do thank you for family that comes for, and visits, for children that come and stay that perfect amount of time and, and return to their own lives uh, to continue going forward. God, we do pray for the family of Jimmy Leonard and, and his passing. Any of us that have been on the planet, even just a short while, know the feeling of loss, uh, the depth, the, the emptiness that we know is, is not part of your plan. God, for them... We lift up prayers and concerns, joys and sharing in the life that was his. God, we offer our, our day to you, and not just this day, but each day. We ask your presence in it so that when we pass, if that should come to happen, that others will lift up prayers for us, for our families. That others might say there were ones who knew the Lord. And God, so we offer up our prayers. We, we step out boldly to pray the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. It's most commonly known as the, the parable of the Good Samaritan, but it starts out with a, a set of questions. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You've answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. When he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and he saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And then he put the man in his own, on his own donkey, took him to an inn, took care of him. And the next day, he took out two silver coins, and he gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I'll reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, would you illumine in our minds, in our hearts, in our hands, this scripture that you have for us today. Help us all to, to wend a little ways down your path, that we might see your face and know your will. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. So a lawyer came up to test him, and then so I'm going to test you. Fair? How are we doing as a church? And you don't have to speak back. You can. If you've got, you got something, you know, if, you, if this is the place to settle, let's, you know, we can do that. But how are we doing as a church? Think on it. Chew on it a little bit. How are we doing as a denomination? I have to chew on that one a little more. How are we doing as, like, the church? Like Christianity? It's been a couple thousand years since... Christ walked among us, almost. And another 10 years, they, they figured that Christ was doing his ministry about 30 A.D., plus or minus three years. We're not exactly sure of the dates. Uh, he forgot to write it in his planner. It's okay, it was a little funny. Just, <laughs> I snuck it in there. It's a dad joke. I'm, I'm allowed. I have three kids. Our answer to these questions... Unfortunately, from church to church, parishioner to parishioner, and throughout denomination to denomination is a little bit subjective. You know what that means? For those younger, subjective, I'm talking to you in front. Yeah, see, I can see you. This is, this is great when we're close. Oh, you're fine. You can do what you need to do. But I'm just saying, subjective. It means subject to our own opinion. How are we doing as a church? Well, some might say, well, we're not running short of, of priests like our Catholic neighbors. Well, we are running short of pastors and parishioners alike. Matter of fact, did you know that churches tend to be so hard on pastors that according to the Alban Institute and Fuller Theological Seminary, a seminary which I attended briefly, 50% of new pastors drop out of ministry in the first five years, most of whom never return. For those of us just joining online, my name is Dwayne Mullen, and this is day 12 of my job. <laughs> that leaves 1,813 days to go before I could completely leave this forever. That's just one indicator. Cutting back to the Old Testament, Amos, what do you see? A plumb line. If you're under 20 and know what a plumb line is, raise your hand. Excellent. Good man. What is it? It's not really a test. A plumb line is a simple tool. It's genius. There are certain tools that are used in, in construction, in building things of any kind, that are so simple they are brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And a plumb line is one of them. 
I can tell you, I once was building a, a house. I had traveled to, to Mexico with youth a number of times, and we built houses, and, and we, had, uh, we weren't using a plumb line in this particular instance. We're setting the ridge beam. And it was a, a 2 by 12 and 24 feet long, uh, a good long beam. It's actually two separate beams that come together, and, and we jointed them in the middle. And we're trying to line up how the roof panels are going to go. We've squared the walls, you know, this way, and we just square them, you know, to the top of the entire structure. And my brain thought it knew better than something even simpler than a plumb line. If you've ever done any construction, what's your favorite simple tool? Anybody? Favorite simple tool? Say again? Hammer? God bless you. <laughs> yes, a hammer. But my favorite simple tool is a piece of string. That's it. Because when you stretch a string between two points, it's straight. Unless you've wrapped it around a bush, which I have the superpowers to do so, it's, it's straight. And I lined up this string from one end of the ridge beam to the other end of the ridge beam, and my brain was going, oh, we need to straighten the house. Or the string is wrong. But I was wrong. The ridge beam was a noodle. It's a 2 by 12. It's not terribly wide, but it was definitely, you know, uh, I don't know. He says it's not terribly thick, but it's terribly wide. And it, the board itself wasn't straight. And the guy standing behind me who had, you know, 10 more years experience in construction is one of these, you know, tap on my shoulder and say, hey, uh, trust the string. I'm outdone by a piece of string. God bless string. That special tool has been used to set more gardens, more fields, more walls straight than I've ever seen. And a plumb line is simply a piece of string with a weight on it. Now, if you, my friends in engineering school at the University of Washington, they would uh, turn their own plumb bob. They, that was kind of a fun thing they got to do. They could use the big machine and, you know, home down one of these things and make their own plumb bob. And uh, that's the weight that hangs at the end of it for the youngins. In the old world, they probably used a, a, a rock. And the fact of the matter is that all the metal and stone and wood construction materials in the world are no match for that string and a rock. I'm going to leave that for a moment. In our gospel today, a lawyer, read a Pharisee, somebody whose job it is is to make sure that all of the, the scripture, any of the preaching that is done, any of the commentary that's done, any of the teaching that's done, is done according to the accuracy of the law, as they understand it. So this religious official, like an actual government-type position, it's like a lawyer. This person stands up and asks Jesus a question. Teacher? Starts out with the title, teacher. He knows who the man is. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus responds with a question. Well, you're a lawyer. What's the law say? Well, you might know that his response goes back to an ancient prayer coming from Deuteronomy and Leviticus. It's called the Shema prayer. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God, the Lord is one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all thy mind, and all thy strength. And on and on it goes on eventually to say, love thy neighbor as thyself. And Jesus says, right, answer. Do that and you'll live. And the lawyer, hmm, follow-up question. By the way, who is my neighbor? And Jesus says, let me tell you about some people that live just a little bit north of here. You don't really like them. They aren't considered equal with yourself. But we're going to just have a story about them. There was a guy walking along on a road on his way to, you know, coming down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he was attacked by robbers. He was stripped, he was beaten, he was left half dead, and, you know, laying there in a ditch or on the side of the road or what have you. And a priest sees him and comes walking by and goes, I'm just not going to step in that. And goes around. And, and then a Levite, which is another keeper of the law, the Levitical tribe, the priests, right? I'm going to just make sure I don't step in that either. Because as keepers of the law in Jewish tradition, remember we talked about before, if you touch somebody that's unclean, 
right? Somebody that has a, a disease or an affliction or what have you, you become unclean and you can't do your job for an appointed amount of time. You're out. You can't do it. And eventually a Samaritan. Just a merchant, guy traveling, got to do his thing, comes by, sees him, collects him, cares for his wounds, puts, it says, oil and wine on his wounds, a little bit of alcohol, cleans him up, puts him on his donkey, takes him to the inn, cares for him for a night, pays the innkeeper two silver coins, and says, I'm, I've got to go complete my business, and I can't, this can't take him with me. I've got to come back. But when I do, I'll pay you for whatever the extra expense is. And, and then, you know, we don't know what happens after that. But Jesus says, who showed this man mercy? And the lawyer says, well, you know, you know who was the neighbor is Jesus' question. And, and the lawyer says, well, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus says, great, go and do Likewise. Now, I'm going to ask you a question that's going to sound a little bit like the Beatles and Charles Manson. Are you ready for a little Helter Skelter? Well, Helter Skelter, really, it's a carnival ride. It's a slide. It starts at the top and it spirals real quick and goes down to the bottom. It's a little bit scary, a little bit chaotic. You know, if you know the song, when you get to the bottom, you go back to the top of the slide where I stop and I turn and I go for a ride until I get to the bottom and I see you again. We're going to go back to the top. It's a little chaotic, so bear with me. How are we doing as a church? How are God's people doing as church? The PCUSA alone has declined in numbers since 1990 to 2020, 58%. That's going from 3.5 million down to 1 million people, roughly, in the church. In the last year, losing about 100,000 members. Chaos question number one. Why is Jesus talking to this lawyer? The answer is actually the same as it was last week. Do you remember? Seventy-two disciples sent out as missionaries told to go proclaim the kingdom of God is near. Where did he go? The seventy-two didn't go to Samaria. They were told to go proclaim the word of God. And if anybody rejects you, kick the dust off your sandals and it will be a curse against them. They were sent to the villages of Israel, not anywhere else. They're sent home, locally, go close by. We're not going to some far off land as missionaries. I'm sending you to missionaries next door or to the town past that. I'm going to send you out and proclaim to the people of God, the kingdom of God is near, and some are going to reject you. Chaos question number two. What is God saying about the Samaritan? You remember last week when I talked about Samaria? How the, the Christians, or sorry, the Jews, got ahead of myself, got to wait a couple, you know, hundred years. Uh, the Jews would pass through uh, Samaria, and if they could avoid it, they'd just flat go around. But if they did pass through, they'd shake the dust off their sandals to keep from the filth of Samaria from keeping them from being unclean from going into the temple, the synagogue, to worship. Because the Samaritans, uh, Samaritans were known as corrupt people. They had been the northern kingdom of Israel. Remember the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom? Maybe you don't, maybe you do. But Israel as one nation, and then when Solomon became king, a general in the north took ten tribes of Israel and formed the kingdom of Israel in the north, and Solomon had two kingdoms in the south and formed the kingdom of Judah in the south. Two tribes in the south, ten in the north. Say again? The son Rehoboam, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. It's not germane to the story. <laughs> My wife, a seminarian. God bless her. Uh-oh, toys down. A better question may, might be, what is Jesus saying about Israel? 
The real question for us is, what is Jesus saying about the church? And what are the two commandments? Right? Love God with every single bit of yourself, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Now, if you're paying attention, when I quoted the Old Testament, I only mentioned three of those. There's three in the Old Testament, and they kind of expand it to make four. You know, heart, mind, and strength, or heart, soul, and mind, and it, a couple of different ways you look at it. But basically, it means all of your physical body, everything that makes up every ounce of your DNA, and all of your thinking. And all your nerves, and the you know, synapses that they fire, whatever, just every bit of you. Love God, and also love our neighbors as ourselves. The great and terrible thing about us is that we tend to get stuck on the law. Like, okay, okay, God, we get it. Our neighbor is anyone and everyone. We get it. It can be someone who doesn't even know God, right? We still have to love them. Yeah, except that's half the story. We skipped the first part. And I'm going to submit to you my take on, on, on everything, and, and this may be just the, the last thing I have to say for the next you know, five years, and then you know, 1,813 days we can just decide what happens. Everything. Well, everything wrong with everything, but specifically I mean everything wrong with everything in every church everywhere in all time throughout history. I've got it covered, kind of like loving God with every bit of yourself, every problem that we've ever had as followers of God, even going back to the people of Israel. In all times, in all places, in every pastor, priest, parishioner, and budget meeting and prayer, this is going to be my recipe. You ready? While Douglas Adams might suggest that the answer to life, the universe, and everything is 42, that's a computer joke if you like computers, our answer is that we lose sight of the first law more often than not. Love God with everything. I'm going to prove it to you. You ready? If I say go home and love your spouse, your wife, your husband, your kids, your neighbor, what might you do differently, and how long will it last? You may not do anything differently. You may do something differently for the day, and then tomorrow you wake up and go, still can't find my socks, or whatever. What would we do differently? And further proof, we may say that we would do better at this or that, But in six months, do we look any different? In which case, this is a waste. If it would really last, then aren't we done with church forever? What do we care if the, if the PCUSA has lost 2.5 million members in 30 years? No, I'm going to bring this down to a piece of string. All right? The measure that makes walls straight... And also what makes walls stand the test of time. If your wall's going like this, and how many years before it's, right? But if your wall is true, if it stands upright, it has a better chance of lasting a longer time. If I say love your family or friends, we might have an idea of what that is. If I ask how we love God, what do you say? If I say, love your wife, gentlemen, and you say, I'm going home to take out the trash. Well, God bless you. Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. That's fantastic. Do that and keep doing that for the rest of your lives. And Okay, that's, that's something, right? That's getting somewhere. But if I ask you what, what it would loving God look like, and you say showing up to church... Aren't churches filled with a bunch of people oftentimes that believe all manner of things that may or may not have anything to do with God and at least disagree from this side to this side to this side to this side? Let's try, I'll prove it to you again. How many weddings are held in churches overall? Well, about 70% of them. What's the divorce rate in America? That one hurts, doesn't it? 
showing up while it's a, a start isn't enough. I can show up at home and ignore my family. Right? I'm going to submit to you that the same thing that does make relationships with a spouse or a child or a neighbor are a good starting point for loving God. So what are the rules for loving somebody? Go ahead and shout them out. What do you, when you know that you love your significant other, your children, your friend, your neighbor, anything, tell them. Amen. What else? Say again. Respect. Yes. What else? I'm sorry, what? That's a joke. <laughs> yes, listening. For goodness sake. What about saying you're sorry? What about giving of ourselves more than we expect? What about not cheating? And here's my point. Do we want to be successful as the people of Christ? I'm not talking about being successful as being Presbyterians. I'm talking about being successful as the people who pay attention to God, who have claimed our devotion to Christ. The ones who set themselves up true to that plumb line, that piece of string. Let's not be undone by a piece of string, church. Make God first. Make God central Give God all our time. Do all to the glory of God. Try listening. Read God's word and listen. Try prayer. Take a knee if you can. Knee or bow in your heart if you have to. Profess Jesus as Lord of our lives and then listen to God. Don't cheat. Don't do God and, and just do God for starters. Right? Right? Be Christians. Is the point the law, a set of rules or things that we're doing? They may be in there. They're a part of a way of getting to know God, right? Who is made for what? The Sabbath for, for man or, or man for the Sabbath? Is this day set aside that we might follow the rules and you all better be here or you know, you know what, Right? Or maybe as you're passing somebody by, it may make you unclean to stop and to bind their wounds and to wash them and, and put ointment on their bodies and bring them to a place and spend money you were going to spend on your wife or your spouse or your children or your children were going to spend on you or whatever and spend that on someone else and be late to church. The point is, why is God speaking to us at all? The point is the peace of the wholeness. If we can divest, right, peel off the layers that are laboring us down, the things that we do that make us busy, that keep us from being. The point is the love of God and Christ Jesus come down. The point is that Christ has died for us. Christ is risen for us. Christ sitteth at right hand of God the Father Almighty for us. The point is we cannot build faith upon actions unless we are set true on God. The point is that you can't love your neighbor without loving God. Otherwise, your loving your neighbor is set upon our selfishness and not upon our wholeness and holiness as set apart to love Christ. Does that make sense? And everything else becomes loving people on our own terms. And I don't have enough terms to get through it all, believe you me. If we know this, then people will see and know our Lord and be drawn to him. And there'll be no fear about numbers dwindling or who gets elected or if there isn't enough money because we won't be relying upon ourselves for success. We'll be secure in the palm of the hands of our Lord that no one will snatch us from it. 
do this, and we shall live and inherit eternal life. May God help us all. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus Christ, God help me. God help me. If my neighbor should pray that as well, God help us all. God grant me peace. Help me to find you. Help me to put uh, all of my shortcomings in the proper place and rely on you. God help me not to fear not to fear my neighbors, not to fear politics, not to fear my bank account, not to fear. God, be with us and help us to see your face. Amen. Our hymn of response is number 132, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. upon my heart free it from sin through all its horses move stoop to my weakness mighty as you are and make me love you as I ought to love I ask no dream, no prophet ecstasies, no sudden rending of the veil of clay, no angel visit, opening skies, oh, take the dimness of my soul away. Did you not bid us love the God and King, love you with all our heart and strength and mind? I see your cross there Teach my heart to cling. Oh, let me see you and let me find. Teach me to feel that love are always nigh. Teach me the struggles of the soul to bear, to check the rising, doubt the rebel sigh, teach me the patience of unanswered prayer, teach me to love you as your angels love one holy passion filling all my frame the baptism of the heaven descended dove my heart and altar and your love the flame. May be seated. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, would you uh, take and add your blessings to these offerings that you're about to receive? God, would you do with them what we cannot? Place your hands upon them and bless them. Bless the hands that give and the hands that wish they could. The sacrifices that are made, take them and make them great 
in your power and in your name, in whose name we pray, amen. presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see the glory on each face. Surely in the presence of the Lord is in this place. However you got here, we're still on? Yep. However you got here, whatever path you took, if you found a wound along the way and you want to pray with a neighbor, I bet you can find one here. Amen? Amen. Then may God bless you, add to you, grow you, draw us all closer to the center, and make us whole. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may all God's people say, Amen. Amen. May God bless you all. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ. The sun give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong, may the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks.